Nina, talk to me about WandaVision. Okay, so basically, WandaVision was the Marvel Cinematic Universe's very first television series. Wait, what about all the Netflix series that came before it? I don't know what that is. What about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Peggy Carter? I've never heard of those. And what about the memorable shows on Hulu and Freeform, like Runaways, Cloak and Dagger, Hellstrom? Tom, you sound confused. Those shows definitely didn't happen. What's that sound? What are you doing? So basically, WandaVision is a bunch of things all at once. A villain origin story, an homage to classic television, an excuse for an amazing actress to effortlessly flex her chops while dressing up like a Halloween store employee. It's also a show about a witch and a robot who do kiss it. Well, that sounds kind of fun. However, it is definitely not a show where a grieving woman enslaves an entire community while mourning her lost love. Uh, it sounds like maybe that's what the show actually is. It's not! Stop thinking that! But hey, remember that classic sitcom, The Dick Van Dyke Show? Sure. Well, in the very first episode, Wanda and Vision have his boss over for dinner. Wanda needs to cook a delicious chicken dinner, but her reality-altering godlike powers turn the chicken into a bunch of eggs. Whoops, women, am I right? I guess. It's an adorable ode to classic sitcoms, like I Dream of Jeannie, Bewitched, The Mary Tyler Moore Show, Choke by Chuck Palahniuk. One of these things is not like the other. Things definitely stay super normal in the second episode where Vision battles his worst enemy, chewing gum, and Wanda tries to make friends with a bunch of wine moms. It's a real hoot. <laughs> okay, yeah, what a fun premise, right? We're taking a couple of Marvel superheroes, we're putting them in a classic sitcom send up. I know, a beekeeper definitely doesn't mysteriously emerge from a sewer. Despite her husband's lack of genitals, Wanda doesn't become so pregnant so quickly that her organs are forced to violently shift inside of her as her abdominal tissue stretches like a rubber sheet across her distended torso. Also, there's a magic show. That is, that that's horrifying. A magic show? Is it? Uh, what's that dinging noise? Are you, are you winking? Are your eyes made out of xylophone? Anyway, something that's important to know is that none of this is happening inside of a big pile of alternate reality jello, and there's definitely not a bunch of scientists, soldiers, and character actors from the outside world watching and planning to invade the jello and shoot Wanda right in her crazy little trauma noggin. It's such a fun show! Whoa, hey, did you just say that they're gonna shoot Wanda in the head? No! Uh, okay. Anyway, back in the insanity jello that we're definitely not in, Captain Marvel's little buddy Monica shows up as a backdoor pilot for another show, while Wanda's grasp on reality gets shakier and shakier, but everything is fine, even wonderful, even though she gives birth to twins who age really quickly and nobody bats an eye. Yeah, why isn't anyone in this town doing any eye batting about any of this, by the way? Well, you see, they're all secret mind prisoners in constant screaming mental agony at being controlled by a powerful witch who's using them to process her trauma. What? Hey, remember Modern Family? Hold on, just stop. So does Wanda. There's a whole episode of the show where Wanda talks to the camera and eats nothing but cereal because she's got a case of the grumpies. She wears baggy clothing, says a couple of sassy one-liners from under a heavy blanket, and has a messy low ponytail. Hashtag relatable. Hashtag Monday. Hashtag wine moms. Can we, can we just jog back to the thing about the constant screaming and mental agony? Because I feel like we sort of zipped right past that. Maybe a, li maybe a little too quick. Wow, do you love Malcolm in the middle? Not really. I mean... Great, because in a loving send-up of that, that 90s pop culture sitcom cornerstone, Wanda's gunshot victim brother comes back to life. Wait, he comes back to life? Because he was literally dead. It's a spooky Halloween episode. Oh. And besides, we only see his rotting corpse-like face once and it's over super fast, so you barely even notice it. And also Vision is actually dead and everyone is screaming on the inside and none of this is happening. And the Halloween store lady is actually the villain. Wait, there are two zombies? Wait, who's the villain? Because I'm I'm so confused right now. <laughs> Tom, it's really not that complicated. Wanda has a wacky sitcom neighbor named Agnes. She helps her and Vision out with their kooky problems, like cooking dinner for Vision's boss, getting their newborn twins to sleep while wearing 1980s style aerobics gear, and killing a dog. Yeah, sure sounds like a classic sitcom send up. But Agnes is actually a powerful witch named Agatha Harkness, who's been alive since the 17th century and who was drawn to the immense power of the illusion Wanda created around this New Jersey jello. She's there to steal Wanda's magical energy, but along the way, she also drops a deuce on what's left of X-Men fans' goodwill and threatens to bite some kids. It's such a fun show! <laughs> Nina, are you doing okay? I need you to ding once for yes, ding twice for no. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally fine. Totally fine. Why? <laughs> What is going on with you? I'm fine. Here I am. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> anyway, pretty soon we find out that while it was Agatha all along, it was actually really Wanda all along. How could it be both of them all along? Though? I don't... Then the two ladies remember they're in a Marvel thing and they have a big magic laser fight in the sky. And there's lots of colorful explosions and wire work. It's fine. Pew, pew. <sighs> all right. I, I, I was worried that this was starting to get a little too heavy. This is nice. This is good. Then Wanda outsmarts her rival, imprisons her in her own brain, learns to accept that her husband is dead. The kids she loves with her entire heart are actually figments of her broken, diseased imagination, and that she spent several weeks torturing an entire town with 
live in constant agony as she used them like so many life-size therapy dolls. At the very end, Wanda reads from a demon book and hears the lamentations of her imaginary not kids crying from hell, probably. Oh, yeah, there it is. Anyway, <laughs> that's a WandaVision. It's a fun tribute to sitcoms of the past while blazing a wacky new trail for the MCU of the future. I mean, that's that's not really what I got from it. No? No, it sounds kind of like it's about learning to confront your feelings and that you should deal with your pain constructively and that it's maybe all too easy to use and manipulate others in order to live in denial. Oh. Yeah. So, what you're saying is I should probably free that family I'm tied up in my basement, huh? Uh, I'm sorry, the what? I'm kidding. <laughs> I was, I was, I was really... Hey, it's your old pal Tom from OK So Basically. You can check out another one of our videos right over there. And uh, I'll tell you what, if you like and subscribe, I'll tell you what I put in this drink. I'll give you a hint. I don't have halitosis anymore. <laughs>